the XFL quickly captured the hearts and imaginations of millions of people who love football. Unfortunately, as a new enterprise, we were not insulated from the harsh economic impacts of uncertainties caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Accordingly, we have filed a voluntary petition for relief under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. This is a heartbreaking time for many, including our passionate fans, players, and staff, and we are thankful to them, our television partners, and the many Americans who rallied to the XFL for the love of football. Kicker from the 30. Return team lined up at the opposite 30. Can't move to the ball is fielded. And here goes Keith Mumphrey. And they're going to turn it around with room on the near side. And for the first time, they get creative. And the Battlehawks have the sideline. And a kickoff return for Joe Powell to the end zone. And now they say he stepped out. No, touchdown, St. Louis. What is up, my friends? Welcome to a somber edition of the XFL Week in Review. I'm your host, Mark Perry from XFL News Hub. On this week's show, of course, we're talking about the XFL is done for the 2021 season. Laid off employees, declared bankruptcy today. What you just heard or saw was the final tweet uh, of, I forget the actor's name, walking off into the sunset with the crowd chanting and he's kissing them goodbye. Uh, Dylan something, Jacob Dylan Hoff or something, what is his name? I don't know. So what does it all mean? We have a kind of a recap of what happened, where we're at today. And we got so much more. So how do you get in touch with the show? Well, you email podcast at XFL News Hub with your MP3, your videos, or call 888-430-7692, to extension 3. Remember, cutoff time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Mondays. Always, we love it when you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We read it on the show. Question of the week, reaction to the XFL shutting down for the 2021 season, potentially even shutting down for good. That's where we're at now. We are live Every Monday, but however, this will be the final live show from the XFL Week in Review podcast. There's no need for us to do it. We don't know what's going to happen. This doesn't mean that XFL News Hub is closing. No, because I want to know what happens with all these players. And it's not 100% the door is closed yet. So we're keeping the lights on. We're going to follow all the players that were part of the XFL, their journey in the NFL, coaches where they wind up their journey as well. And if by chance something happens where we get some treatment or a cure or a a vaccine for this COVID-19 and Vince McMahon, well, we'll get all into that, kind of his mindset of where things are, then maybe we'll be back. We don't know yet. So if you want to hang out with me, though, from XFL, Mark from XFL News Hub, We do have another website. If you're into pro wrestling, if you're into AEW, you can check out every Thursday at 8 p.m. our live podcast for the Pro Wrestling News Hub. Shocker, you have XFL News Hub, and then you have Pro Wrestling News Hub. That is our 100% dedicated to AEW wrestling on TNT. It's a great show. There's no sports going on. There's no live sports. They have It's taped now that everybody's taping their stuff, but it's I enjoy AEW. If you guys don't know, before I even got involved with the XFL, I've had two successful pro wrestling news sites. Kind of got burnt out by the whole WWE thing. Vince announced the XFL. Thought it would be fun to cover football. And got into it, and it was a lot of fun. And we made it through five games, and it was still a lot of fun. And I appreciate you all following along. I appreciate all the writers from XFL News Hub that have come along the way. Made some good pals over there at XFL News Hub. People in the industry, my fellow podcasters and website owners and all sorts of stuff. But we're going to keep the lights on for XFL News Hub. But for the podcast, my plan going forward is we're going to just table it for a little while. And when there's breaking news, things happen. uh, We'll definitely talk about that. I definitely want to talk about Kenny Robinson. But we're not going to go live anymore because there's really 
not much to talk about basic after today. So we have that. You can also check out our XFL to NFL player tracker. That's up to date. We'll talk about some of the guys who signed with NFL teams. But without further ado, folks, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. And let's talk about how we got from here to there. So first, let's talk about Thursday. Thursday. Our own Connor Falk reported that the XFL would be refunding the 2021 ticket deposits and credits in response to the economic hardships that impacted millions of Americans during the COVID-19 pandemic. So according to our Connor Falk, he was told by a league official that all deposits season ticket holder will be refunded. And this is an attempt for the XFL to put money back in the pockets of fans during these economically challenging times. Thought that was strange. Part of me was like, hey, I'll, I'll, you keep the money. That's fine by me. I would rather you guys keep it. But whatever, that was, that was Thursday evening. And this was from some of the letters that came out. It said, quote, given the pandemic increased economic hardships so many Americans are facing, the XFL is refunding. Your 2021 Los Angeles Wildcats tickets is also sent out to the Battle Hawks. Credits, including any count from resold games so that you can have funds on hand. That was Thursday night. Friday, the XFL suspends day-to-day operations and lays off everybody. That was surprising. So basically, the startup terminated everybody on their payrolls. And it was at that time, it was like maybe it was just to save money for the 2021 season. We'll get into what happened there. And this came a day after the XFL refunded their season ticket holders. So we were all kind of in shock by what happened there. But let's get to the top guy here, Mike Mitchell. You all know him. One of the greats, great XFL writers. Gave us a little behind the scenes of what happened ending the 2021 season because it was not supposed to end this way. So on Friday, the XFL suspended operations, terminated all teams and most league staff, and an apparent end to Vince McMahon's second attempt to launch the new Pro Football League. Jeffrey Pollock shared the news with nearly 400 people at a noon conference call that lasted only about 10 minutes. How did we get to this point after showing so much promise as a viable and well-orchestrated Pro Sports League? Well, on March 20th, the cancellation of the, se- the season due to the pandemic created a huge, massive hole in the legal fin- uh, the league's financial projections. It wasn't the end-all, be-all, but it didn't help matters. The second half of the XFL season was going to help build the league's foundation and set it up its future. With no profits in sight and only heavy financial losses on the ledger, the XFL lost half their earnings that they needed to survive to get to year two because they only played five games. The XFL had a specific budget in place going into years one, two, and three. It was actually calculating balance of expenses and revenues. The league was always going to operate under a loss in year one, but with half of its profits gone for season one, the XFL was in an even deeper hole heading into a potential second season. The revenue from the league's remaining 23 games were going to help float the league into year two. So you have losing those five games was devastating. With losses in year two now expected to be higher than projected due to the current and future business climate, the entire financial ball game changed for the XFL. The pre-COVID-19 XFL budget wasn't built to survive a COVID-19 world. The business plan was different with the world as different with the world as we know it today. So with uncertainty surrounding the return of sports leagues in general in any form which would have played, which would they have been played also contributed to the XFL's end. Sports leagues like NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA can absorb these kind of losses, but startup leagues like the XFL can't. And the world is basically in a deep recession and it's something that the XFL could not handle themselves, and especially after losing 
five, really five, six, seven games, because you're talking about playoffs and the championship game, which really would have pulled in fans for, for year two. So there was no mention of a 2021 season on the league-wide conference call, leaving open the remote possibility of the XFL coming back. But at this moment, there is only skeleton staff. And on Thursday, the XFL refunded the fan deposits for 2021. So 2021 is basically out. And skeleton staffs are usually in place just to wind down everything. So 2021, there's no way, no chance in hell, as Vince McMahon would say, of happening. So how surprising was the XFL's mass layoffs? Until just a few days ago, XFL business partners were operating on the assumption that the 2021 season was a full steam ahead. Head coaches like D.C. Defenders Pep Hamilton were creatively finding workarounds to the current environment, communicating with players, staffs, preparing for teams. Execs like Dallas Renegades' Dower Johnson were confident the league was headed into another season. I think he was even on the radio or something talking about that. All employees were paid out through April 12th for the remaining vacation personal days. And on Friday morning, there were a few team executives who received larger, normal, no larger than normal paychecks, an anonymous sign that something was going to happen. Anyone who was realistic about the XFL's chances before the COVID-19 pandemic knew that the XFL was going to be a fighting an uphill battle to survive, that odds were against them, COVID-19. However, just threw a wrench in all of that. You cannot compare this to NFL Europe or the AAF or USFL or anything. The XFL was poised, had everything in place, a pandemic that we've never seen in a global scale except since the Spanish flu, but this is a completely different economy. There's more people on the earth. There wasn't television, internet, all these other things going on. So we've never seen anything like this as a global slowdown across the world before and that really just kind of killed the XFL for 2021 as we thought there was a poll that came out a couple days around that time that said nearly three out of four Americans won't attend games without a coronavirus vaccine now, this was, Darren Ravel had pushed this out. They had sent it to us. So they said 72% of Americans say they would not attend a game before a coronavirus vaccine was available, according to Hall Sports Poll. This is from Seton Hall, I believe, University. So they did a survey and asked fans, once the leagues resume play, how do you feel about going to a game if there was no vaccine? And only and 72% of the Americans said they would not attend a game with 12% saying they would if social distancing could be maintained, which is impossible. And only 13% said they would feel safe. <coughs> Among sports fans, the number still drops to a significant 61%. So they asked everybody. The problem is medical experts have repeatedly put a timeline for approval of a vaccine into 2021, although they have not ruled out an existing drug providing effective treatment this year. 74% of Americans thought it was possible, likely or very likely, that sports would be canceled for the rest of the year. So not only are we seeing this, but other sports people, and I would assume Vince McMahon saw this too. This was by Seton Hall University. Um, we have a link to it on XFL News Hub, but they put out a, a very thorough survey. It wasn't like, we asked five people of our friends. This was a big survey. Coupled with this problem, we go into the final stage of all this craziness. Today, Alpha Entertainment, the parent company of the XFL, declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, if you don't know what Chapter 11 bankruptcy is, it's a form of banks. This is from the Investopedia website. Chapter 11 is a form of banks bankruptcy that involves a reorganization of debts debitors, business affairs, debts, and assets named after the U.S. Bankruptcy Code 11. Corporations generally file Chapter 11 if they require time to restructure their debts. This version of bankruptcy gives the debitors a fresh start. So it's a chance to kind of wash the, the slate clean. They owe people money. I'm not really sure if they pay them. I don't know what the deal is. We have the document on XFL News Hub if you want to check it out. 
One thing, as I read through the document, was there was a part in it that said, quote, Mr. McMahon has recused himself from the consideration and approval of any post-petition financing since he is a potential source of such post-petition financing. And I thought that was a little interesting. Does that keep the door open for the XFL? And why would they put that in the document? If it was basically closed deal, why would he put in that, hey, in this refinancing, restructuring of the XFL, Vince McMahon might put up some of his own money to kind of clean, clear the slate, so to speak. Now, just for the record, other companies that you may have heard of have declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy before. Maybe you've heard of some of these. Apple, General Motors, Marvel Entertainment are just a few that have recovered from Chapter 11. In the beginning of the show, we read the statement from the XFL that they gave to a couple different websites, um, TMZ, one of them, about kind of how they feel things are going now. They owe the estimated number of creditors, according to the document, was between one and 5,000. Estimated assets are 10 to 50 million. Estimated liabilities is 10 to 50 million. Here was something that was interesting because Vince McMahon had said that the WWE is not involved with the XFL, but according to this, it is because World Wrestling Entertainment owns 23.5% of Class B interest in Alpha Entertainment, which owns the XFL. Vince McMahon owes 100% of the Class A and 76.5% interest in the Class B, essentially making Vince McMahon the owner of the Class A stock, owns most of the Class B, and then World Wrestling Entertainment owns 23.5% of the Class B. People or entities that the XFL owes money to, because you're going on a year two of the contract, Bob Stoops is owed a million, Tressman 777000 Jonathan Hayes 633000 Winston Moss, Kevin Gilbride, June Jones, and Jim Zorn all are owed 583000 I'm sure they're looking at this like, how does Jonathan Hayes get 633000 And Winston Moss, Kevin Gilbride, they're like, wait, he makes more than me? Four, uh, four seven brand is owed $846,000. And the St. Louis Sports Commission, remember all this, the work that they've done, they owe them $1.6 million. In St. Louis, then there's also Globe Life Field, that whole thing that was going on. So you can read the whole document by going to XFL News Hub. We have the link there. You could download it, and you can check it out there. Does this mean that the XFL is done 100%? No one knows. Vince McMahon has not come out and said anything, but we have to remember this. All of this is 100% not on the people and the fans of the XFL. Forget about the haters because they're just trolls. But you can blame this 100% on the COVID-19 pandemic. If there was no COVID-19, we would be going into the playoffs. Or if even if COVID-19 had started now, we would have been fine. But losing those five games plus two playoff weekends was tens of millions of dollars and they had to shut it down. And with no pandemic end in sight, Alpha Entertainment was basically left with no choice. That's the sad situation we're kind of in right now. Now I've heard through sources that one of the reasons Vince McMahon had kind of pulled the plug on this, clearly there were issues with the financing and losing the games, but Vince McMahon is of the belief that there's going to be no sports in 2022, 2020, 2020, this year, and potentially no sports at all in 2021. So why pay all these people this money if you believe that in 2021, there's not going to be a chance for an XFL season? You're teetering. You can't absorb that. There's no way to do it. That's what Vince McMahon thinks according to sources. So just let that sink in, sports fan out there, NBA fan, NHL, NFL, college football, college basketball, tennis, golf, you name it. 
that's what's kind of on the horizon, that there could be no sports this year at all. The door is not 100% closed until I hear Oliver Luck or Vince McMahon say, I have no interest in ever bringing back the XFL. I'm a little surprised that he would even come and say that. I don't think they know. No one knows. You don't know. Listening or watching on YouTube, you don't know what's going to happen. Next week, they could be like, hey, we got a great treatment. It works. You shove this stuff up your nose, you spray it, and then you're, you're healed in a week. Or it could be years before we get a vaccine. We just don't know. And this thing is crazy, and, and we don't know. And neither do they. There's insider stuff, but I'm sure they're seeing what you're seeing. We got, you know, reports from our, you know, reporters that staff was messaging them and saying, hey, what's going on? Do you think it's coming back? And we're like, you worked for them. We don't know. Hearing all kinds of stuff. So we don't know. I think at this point, the door is still a little open. Here's how it could work out. Sit on the bench 2021. You got no staff. You got nothing. But the, the, the wheels, the system is in place. You wait until 2021 when that, if that Summer Olympics happens. Things chill out because that's a big event. Summer Olympics is a huge event. If the Summer Olympics is a go, then you can be go back to your TV partners who are also going to deal with the after effects. And you, you have, a, hey, this brings in ratings. It was one of the top rated things on, on cable. Maybe you give me some, some cash. We renegotiate a deal and we'll, we'll crank it up over the summer, get our coaching staff. We don't need to, I mean, it would take a while. Maybe Vince would say, all right, give us another year. You know, we'll have, a, a, I don't think he could play a game in 2022. But they would kind of have an idea if the Summer Olympics had said, yep, we're going and we're doing it. And it's February of 2021. The XFL could be like, hey, we're going to come back next year because everything looks good. Vince McMahon's wrestling business is good. And I think that's what he's concerned about most right now is what's going on with his wrestling business. You think about the WWE's business model. It's way too many live events, way too many live shows that they've got to fill and a big deal with Fox for Friday night content that was shaky at best as far as ratings and people's interest. I'm an AEW guy, but I, again, I covered WWE for years and it was painful. And that's when I was like, I'm not even doing this anymore. I don't even want to watch it. There's where we're at. And so with this deal with XFL news hub, we're keeping the lights on. We're going to keep doing our thing. It's not going to be a live show. You can still hang out with me. We'll talk AEW if, if you want to still hang out. That's going to come not this week or next week. I'm trying to figure out when the, the start will be, but I'll post it all on social media or Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that what we're doing. But just go over to Pro Wrestling News Hub, subscribe, search for us on uh, it's AEW Week in Review. Shocker. You have XFL week in review, you have AEW week in review. But there's no vid there's no, nothing on it yet. I haven't posted anything on it yet, but that's that's where we're going. And of course, subscribe on YouTube. You'll find us at Pro Wrestling News Hub. And that's where the live show will be. That's what's coming. I'm sad too. I mean, man, two years in the making, put in a lot of work. You know, brought guys in. We were poised, brothers and sisters, poised to crush it. In 2021, we had the server thing figured out that first weekend. We got crushed with the server. That was figured out. The system was in place. I was writing code for fantasy football. XFL fantasy football. I was writing the code. And all of a sudden, my phone started blowing up from all the writers of XFL News Hub with expletives. That's it. Just expletives starting with an F and an exclamation point ending it. And I'm like, what is this? I thought maybe somebody got hurt or somebody died or something. And then the layoffs. And I'm like, no. And I was wondering, and we were wondering on this show, whether or not they would actually be able to do something with everything. I was like, I don't know if you can. Can you really do this? So 
That's where we're at, my friends, with the XFL going, what's going to happen in the future? So let's get to some more news, my XFL friends. A recap of some player signings in the XFL to the NFL first. LA Chargers sign Wildcats offensive tackle Storm Norton to a two-year deal. This is according to Adam Schefter. He will join former Dallas Renegades Donald Parham on the team there. Norton was the number one overall pick in the phase one offensive line portion of the XFL 2020 draft. Played his college ball at Toledo, and he had stops in the NFL with the Lions, Cardinals, and Vikings. Fellow teammate Saeed Blacknall, also he signs at the NFL, this time with the Steelers. He is the sixth former XFL player to sign with the Steelers. He joins Christian Cunnitz, Tyree Cannell, Jaron Jones, Kayvon Walker, and Dwayne Hendricks. He finished the five-game XFL season with four receptions, 120 yards, and two touchdowns. He was inactive for two games, and he played his college ball at Penn State. He had stops with the Raiders, Cardinals, and Dolphins. Rams signed Dallas Renegades kicker Austin McGinnis. Now, he isn't the only kicker they signed. They signed somebody else from the CFL as well. So the Rams have signed... McGinnis to a one-year deal. He was a top-rated kicker by our very own Mike Mitchell. He was selected in the Phase 5 open draft portion of the XFL draft. He played his college ball at Kentucky. Interesting about him, he was perfect in the XFL. 10 for 10 on field goals during the five games season. He also led the XFL in kickoff average and touchback. He's the fourth Dallas Renegade player to sign with a team. Renegades wide receiver Armonte Edwards signs back with the CFL, the Edmonton Eskimos. So if you remember him, he signed for in the XFL under the Team 9. Then he moved to the Renegades, but he did never catch the pass at his time in the XFL. No terms on the deal was disclosed. So now he goes back to the CFL. Now Edwards spent three seasons with the Toronto Argonauts winning the Grey Cup in 2017 under Vipers head coach Mark Tressman. He had a long-storied career in the CFL, so it makes sense that he would return. Now, the interesting thing about the CFL is, like, okay, even going back to play in the CFL, their season's scheduled to begin June 11th, and that is in jeopardy because of this whole COVID-19 pandemic. And the CFL has already postponed its global draft scheduled for April 16th. So who knows if he will see any playing time this season in the CFL. And finally, the Dallas Cowboys signed Houston Roughnecks cornerback Savon Smith. It's according to John Marchota of The Athletic. He's the fifth Roughnecks player to sign with an NFL team. He had eight tackles and one pass breakup in Houston Roughnecks' first two games, but was inactive the final three. He was selected in the XFL supplemental draft by the Roughnecks, played his college ball at LSU and Alabama. He was once the nation's top prospect at the corner coming out of IMG Academy in Brayton, Florida. He started his college career at LSU before transferring to Mississippi junior college, finished his career at Alabama after a team high three interceptions in his first season at Alabama. He decided to declare for the draft, wasn't drafted, spent some time with the Jaguars and then made his way to the XFL. All right, we'll be back with your social media stuff right after this. Stay tuned. What's up, XFL Army? If you're a fan of the XFL News Hub and you have a telephone, which I know all of you do because you're sitting there playing on your phones all the time, then why not download the XFL News Hub app? That's right. It's on iTunes. It's on Android. We have an Android version and an iPhone version of the XFL News Hub app. So what do you get? You get the latest news from XFL News Hub, the premier source of XFL news in the universe. Plus, you get push notifications when we have breaking news. You will be the first to know. You can leave a comment on some of the news right from your phone. Plus, you get this podcast on your phone as well. Remember, you can leave us reviews on the Google 
Play Store or iTunes. It links to other social media, our other social media accounts, and so much more. Be in the know. I know you're on your phones. People are on their phones all the time. They never get off their phones. So why not just download the XFL News Hub app on your Android or iPhone today? All you need to do is go to the Google Play Store or iTunes and just type in XFL News Hub. That's XFL News Hub. Download our app on your phone today. Uh, I know, my friends. I know. I know you're all super bummed out. I'm with you. I'm bummed out, too. We just got to figure out. I don't. We just don't know. Let's get to some of your reaction on the Facebooks. Matt says, say it isn't so. I thought Vince had enough for three years of operation. It was good football. That's the part. They have the money. I. It's it's losing the five games and the uncertainty of what's going to happen next year. If you go in, if you just keep status quo and then you find out that you can't play games in February. I mean, when were they going to do the, oh, oh, um, you know, with the with the players, the summer showcase, which I was so looking forward to, especially the second time around. They might not have been able to do that. The draft they could, but what happens if the NFL gets delayed? It's really going to be interesting to see what happens over the next two months if things open up again. But it, I guess they couldn't risk it, and this was a better risk. It's according to Darren Ravel, he, uh, on his article, that Vince approached the WWE shareholders, which supposedly they weren't involved with, and ask them, and I think they said, shut it down because they're worried about what's happened with the WWE. You would hate for the XFL to pull up the WWE down, and they both go down in flames, which you don't think could happen, but it could. Maybe Vince is freaked out. Sundar says, we're living in a tough time right now, and everything is shut down. It's hard to keep a business running knowing that no money is coming in. Yes, you could still buy stuff on XFL shop by the way you can still buy stuff and i plan on it uh getting some some merch and it's not like it's heavily discounted or anything i'm getting merch i'm also getting aew merch too putting that out justin if things return to some sort of normal in time for the nfl to provide a decent season's worth of football then vince is gonna look like a fool on the other hand if the nfl skips the upcoming season vince will be considered a south soothsayer and intellect true i think that's what he's playing and if i'm him i the way things stand right now at best you're gonna get live sports with no fans and the xfl needs those fans in the stadium because they don't make any money off of their tv deal that's why it's a wash it's like nah let's let's not do this jeffrey we must be patient for that covid to stop the spread I'm sure they did is to save extra money. I mean, it would be a, a wonderful story. While there's always hope, Don says, we're dealing with both an assault on us by a viral infection and the government who knows what the future holds. Is he going tinfoil hat on us? I don't know, my friends. I don't know. And neither do you. Brian Lombardo had a great article about the XFL suspends amid the virus, what we learned, what spring football needs. Barham says XFL should sell teams to partial owners to take financial burden off of just one investor. That's true. Christopher says it's really, that's a really bad. After I was into the XFL and the Battle Hawks, I feel bad, uh, so terrible for St. Louis. Oh, XFL should do something for the players that lost their jobs. They can't do anything. I think they should get with the NFL and hold some kind of draft for the player. They can get signed with anybody. Feel sorry for the St. Louis fan. Super excited. I saw somewhere where the team president, Kurt Hunsinger, was saying that they were expecting 50000 at their next St. Louis home game. I mean, if you know that, you're good. Like This league can make money. One of the things I thought, and I've always thought about it, is make it a publicly held company like the Green Bay Packers and then let 
do it that way. I don't know. Maybe they could come up with some. But honestly, do you think Oliver Luck is going to come back after this? I don't think so. That's the guy we need. About Mike Mitchell's fantastic article about what went on behind the scenes. Uh, Jeffrey says, ended 2020 season, yes, but don't get yourself ahead about 2021 just yet. We need to first get through the COVID by making a comeback. Uh, worry about the sports later. Justin says, uh, well, you can't see that down there. Justin says down there, well, that is it for the podcasts. Better go get your DC souvenir merch before it runs out. <sighs> Justin, you're kind of right. I don't know. Well, you are right because we're not, we're taking a little break, a hiatus. Reaction to the XFL shutting down. You think it returned? Zach says, Barry said that it had to shut down, but have you seen this picture anywhere? There's supposedly going to be a big announcement on Wednesday to save the future of spring football forever. This came from Brett Terse. Uh, 100%. XFL. I don't know what he's talking about. I'll take a look at it. We'll see. That would be great if there was an announcement on Wednesday. Steven says, I really hope the XFL comes back next year. Really enjoyed watching the games. Looking forward to going to a game next year. I was looking forward to taking my wife to it. She never got to go to a game. It was just a bummer. Jamie, the XFL created jobs not only for the players and staff, but stadium employees and everyone running the league. I know. Jackson, I really hope XFL comes back. I really breathe the fresh air. I was impressed by the league. We really need some more XFL. Yes. Uh, tons of reaction. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to read through all this, but you can see. Um XFL store, Bradley says, is they st still st shopping? XFL shop still running. Uh, Joseph says, I don't know if the XFL will return, but sure hope it does. Love the new rules. The pace of play it deserves to return. Scott says, I want it def back definitely. It was a great league style. Bring back my Seattle Dragons. I'm, I'm with you. Everybody wants it to come back. On the Twitter, Richard, one of our tier two guy, tier one guys, Really hope so 2022 because it was fun to watch and the TV ratings were great. Really miss the XFL. The economics should be okay and hopefully people will be working again. Let's pray. Thank you. Yes, I believe that. Vince, 22. The only reason I'm holding out the smallest hope is neither Oliver Luck or Vince McMahon has commented. I agree with that 100%. In the slimmest of possibilities, they shut it down for 2021 and come back in 2022 as if nothing happened. Same team, same cities. That is my piece, too. And by the way, I do have my merch, my DC Defenders uh, mug that I just drank from. I got that and my shirt. And, oh, what do we got here, my friends? What do we got? Oh, oh the football. I got the football. Cool. Some hair on that. Got my football, which is good, and my hat, and I got a DC Defenders hat recently. I'll, I'm getting some more merch. No worries. Ray says it will. Craig says no, it's it's gone. That's sad. Instagram, what do we got here, your Instagrammas? Oh, my, lots of comments here. Sadly, no. Yes, it will. I hope it returns 2022. It looks like the NFL season might be pushed back all the way to October, perhaps even further, which means a late February, early March Super Bowl right now. The future is uncertain for sports. The XFL doesn't have the luxury of having those employees sitting around for a year with no football being played. Even some of the major sports has cut back executive salaries. I say take a year off, take a deep breath with a mask, and let's restart it. Angel Duran 12 says it great. Moonlight Batman, Batman, I think it will. Most events with the large gatherings are looking at an 18-month hiatus, so a shutdown makes sense. 
even when people are allowed back, a lot will be slow to return. Realistically speaking, 2022 or 2023 would be the earliest you would see the league return. That's another important part, especially with even the um, what was said in that poll that we talked about is fans are not going to come back right away. And Vince knows this, too, because it's going to happen in the WWE world. So it's going to take a while. This is so different than the AAF. The AAF was like, no, we ran out of money. Vince was like, well, he still has money. It's just Hopefully it's pausing, but couldn't you just say we're just pausing? But I guess you have to lay everybody off so that you could save some cash by declaring bankruptcy. I am no lawyer. I just run an XFL site. But I'm smart. I read contracts and stuff. Fred JM 1776, I think it will. An awesome product of football, huge fan support, good TV ratings. Sadly, due to this virus, had to shut down no football. Hopefully 2022, Battlehawks fan Vince should let the COVID-19 pandemic kill, shouldn't let it kill the XFL. After this is all over, the XFL needs to come back stronger than ever. Vince shouldn't let anything stop XFL from coming back where your fans. What do you do about all the employees that were laid off? But I get a lot of people were laid off in their jobs. Uh, Jarko man says, I wish I could say, but spring football is forever cursed. I'm shocked that nobody has been able to support spring football, but the AF showed that it could work. The XFL had it working, but COVID-19 hit them. Spring football is cursed. Interesting going like dark. A lot of the people, yes, I hope it comes back, et cetera, et cetera. They see that. All right, we got a couple of emails, too, on the old social media stuff. Uh, let's check those out real quick. Uh, what do we got on the chat rooms? Uh, it's sad. I really hope it comes back, Richard says. Uh, Tony Hayes, my 77-year-old mother, Martha, loved the XFL. I have her on the phone. Please give her a Hello. I will let her know. Tony Hayes' mom. What is up from your friend Mark from XFL News Hub? I'm glad you're watching. Uh, stay safe out there. And I'm glad you love the XFL. I didn't get a chance to watch the XFL with my mom. Because things were she wasn't here. But we did talk about the New York Guardians. Because that's her, that's her team, the New Yorker. But yeah, so shout out to Mama Tony Hayes there. Miller Kingdom, do you think Vince McMahon will talk to Goodell and work out an arrangement that there would be an XFL and NFL? Uh, and Hemi says the XFL shall return just like General MacArthur. We're going gangster level World War deal. I wonder if Vince McMahon talked to Roger Goodell. They have a good re relationship. We know this. And because um, Oliver Luck and Vince McMahon had met with Roger Goodell. And, of course, there's the connections out the wazoo. If the NFL was telling Vince there is a 50-50 chance that we might just push the season back and play, let's not start the season until October, and that's going to affect you. But it's looking like that's going to be the case or whatever. They're not going to announce it yet. But that's on the a percentage, and, and it's too risky for Vince, and then he pulled the plug. That's a possibility. Scott says, thank you for an exciting and excellent season. I'm a season ticket holder for the D.C. Defenders, as I am. Appreciate the league and the teams looking out for the fans and caring about our families in this unprecedented time. Also, your care for the safety, healthy of the players, personnel, staff, and all work. Because it happens. Another reason I will be returning for a fan in 2021 this was before all that stuff. I know that you are refunding the remaining balance of season tickets to help those who lost incomes. Jog me that speaks volumes of your integrity. My word is my bond. Your organization has made me a true fan of me. I look forward to seeing everyone again and the pandemic permits. Wish your entire organization, staff, their families, and all the fans, supporters, health, happiness, and support. Scott, checking in. I've also gotten emails, people asking me about their, I haven't received a refund or whatever. I am not the XFL. We are XFL News Hub. Do you not know the difference? But I appreciate it. Tier 1 emailer Jamal says, no! 
There has to be hope, Mark. I know you saw the news, but there has to be another season. We've talked about it at length. My friend Jamal checking in. We haven't even hear from our tier one emailer, Nicholas. I don't know what happened to him. He disappeared. Uh, let's see. Anthony says, I want to thank the XFL and its staff and players. The league was really made made me fall in love with football again. Please don't end the XFL Guardians for life. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. All right. Let's go to a phone call right now. Hey, I'm sorry about sounding like really, really stupid, but I'm sure you've already seen the news. and you, uh, I got a lot of questions as well. So the XFL is, just fired all their employees. Does that mean there's I, I'm sorry, I'm sounding really stupid. Does that mean there's no uh, 2021 t- uh, league anymore? Or are they firing everybody and starting over from scratch like they did this past year? I'm trying to be optimistic when I ask that question. I'm hoping it's they fired everybody now, and then they're just going to restart in 2021 for economic reasons or something. Because then Vince McMahon and not Vince McMahon, but Oliver Luck, I'll say, like, hey, we're going to be back in 2021, so what happened? I um, wonder if you could answer that for me. Thank you. Well, we all know the news. Thanks for the phone call. And 2021 is out. We're hoping for 2022. Uh, let's see. Got Favre says net, Vince's net worth is half of what it was two years ago when he decided to start the XFL again. It's going to take him at least four to five years to get back to where he was. He's still worth billions of dollars. So it's not like even if he lost two hundred million, he still remember he's a billion. I don't see any new leagues or expansion teams in the major four leagues happening for the next ten years. Yeah, it's just the the landscape is tough. Landscape is tough, my friends. All right, well, that's it for this week's show. I'm not gonna give out the email podcast at xflnewshub.com. I thank you guys for appreciate that. We'll just keep you in the loop. Don't unsubscribe on YouTube. Don't unsubscribe in the podcast world, wherever you listen to us. Uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, TuneIn, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. We're going to put stuff out when it warrants. We'll let you know ahead of time on all of our social media channels. And you'll know. This will be big news. We'll be out there uh, talking about the XFL. But always stick with XFL News Hub because we're following this league we're basically doing what we were supposed to be doing, except there's not going to be summer showcase and the XFL draft, but we're going to follow things throughout the season and follow these guys and where they wind up. Cause everybody just kind of quit with the AAF, but I'm not going to quit. I'm just want to know what happens to these guys. I'm really curious to see if they make the team. We'll track all that stuff and fingers crossed, lots of prayers. And you know, for this, the people at the front lines of this thing, people doing the research all across the board that we can kind of kick this thing's butt and get back to what we want to do and start talking about some XFL again. Yeah, but I mean, I'm hurt. You're hurt. It just sucks. Uh, so for show notes, xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. We're on. Also hang out with us on our Discord channel. We are there too. Well, so that's it, friends. Hey, thank you, everybody, on the chat room for hanging out with us tonight. I know it was bad. Wish it would be better circumstances. Who knows what's going to happen? Thank you guys so much for being part of us. We're not going anywhere. There's still XFL News Hub is still going to be around. We're just not going to do the live podcast, and we're going to just put out shows once there's some interesting news to kind of follow. And we'll be that. And that will be our deal going forward. But check out me, Pro Wrestling News Hub. I'll be starting that up soon. Pro Wrestling News Hub. uh, That we'll be talking about AEW. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully that doesn't shut down too. Then I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Talk about drying paint on the wall. That's basically what the show will be. If there's no XFL and there's no... Pro Wrestling News Hub shows out there. Then we're going to talk about paint on the walls because there's going to be nothing going on for us. All right, folks. God bless you all. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Mahalo to all you. Again, God bless. Stay safe, my friends out there. That's it for me, folks. And I will see you all. You know, you know the drill. 
I'll see you all later.